All right, Ian. Yeah. Um, last week, I believe it was about Wednesday, there was a, a, a quick an announcement that, hey, guess what? There is a Steam Deck coming out from uh, from Valve. Steam Deck. Yeah. And we were like, well, this is interesting. The next day, hey, you could do pre-orders for the Steam Deck from Valve. So the Steam Deck was announced uh, and uh, took the internet by storm. And boy, howdy. I have things to say on it. Oh, Ian, uh, this is why you yes. pay, get paid the big bucks. Steam Deck, big, big news. Uh, big, it is, is, it, is it big, big news? <laughs> big, big news. Okay. It's big, big news. Big, 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 uh, big, big news. So the Steam Deck is... That's uh, one on the soundboard, that last one. It's a um, it's essentially a portable that looks kind of like a Switch. Uh, that I believe is running on Linux. Okay, look, okay. Look, it looks like a Switch. Okay, we'll get into that. It does look like a Switch. It looks well, like a, it looks like a handheld. It's like a handheld with a screen. Yeah. Um, everyone just calls it this these days. Yes. Everyone said it looked like a Game Gear 2, and I don't think it looked like a Game Gear either. But you can say it looked like, like And then people were like, oh, Nintendo's going to sue. And I'm like, oh, they're not going to sue. They, 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 have, sue they, they have no, nothing to sue over. It's a yeah. handheld. Um, but it is designed to interface with uh, your Steam account, and you can install any game that you can get on Steam, from my understanding, that's in your Steam library, you can play on this. Um, it has a dual joystick setup, D-pad on one side, four buttons, two triggers, uh, two behind handle triggers, and what I think the uh, in, in interesting... Uh, I thought it was four buttons behind. Uh, two, I'm sorry, two behind each handle. Yeah. Oh, okay, so it's One, four. two, two three, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's a lot of buttons. There's also two trackpads. That's what I was getting to. Yeah. That's, that's the design feature that I think is neat. There's yeah. two trackpads that are one on each side of the unit that um, could easily uh, replace using that side's thumbstick as a uh, camera stick. You would be able to uh, track around with your thumb. You'd also oh, be able also to a mouse. just... It's also a mouse, yeah, yeah. for mouse-operated games. If you want to or play navigating. something like Civ or, um, like I said, I've been playing Neverwinter Nights, you could use that. So it's handy. It's created to basically be um, usable with uh, the the large the, the gamut the spread the gamut the gamut the gamut of PC. Games. You can play a smorgasbord of Steam games. Yes, a another piece of game. A smorgasbord of Steam games. It has a I believe it's a seven inch screen. Yes, seven inch screen. Next a second comes in three models. Uh, the first model is a 64 gigabyte model and i believe that's just running off of a memory card the second model is 256 um, gigabytes and that is running off of a solid state drive and then there's a third model that i believe is 512 gigabytes and would be running uh, also, also a solid state drive but both of those and you, also, get, and you get a better screen on the uh, you get a you get a, like an anti-glare yeah. some sort of screen coating um, etching on the glass um, the system itself is 400 bucks for the base, for the base, 529 for the middle, 250 gig and the 649 for the 512 gig anti-glare etched glass screen treatment. And, um, honestly, I, I find the price point for the lowest model in particular to, uh, it was kind of jaw dropping for me when I saw it. I was not expecting that to be any cheaper really than the higher price point. I was expecting to see maybe one model available at about 600 bucks. Yeah. Uh, 700. And I was expecting, I would not you, have expected it to be the 512 gigabyte. Do model. you want to talk about the, the, the actual specs on this thing? Uh, go for it. I'll, I'm bringing it up right now because like, that's what's most impressive about this. And this is how, this is how you market a new console for out there. People trying to do your startups with your consoles. You announce it. You announce the price. You announce what you can. You look at. Hey, what can? What does this thing look like? With you know, in reality, and you say, what is this? So they part with AMD to create Steam Deck's custom APU optimized for handheld gaming. So this is an all new, all new chip. Zen two plus RDNA two powerhouse, delivering more than enough power to run the latest AAA games in a very efficient power envelope. Okay. So this is cutting edge stuff. Yeah, on here. This isn't just some old chip they're throwing in there. This isn't just like a, a like a like a desktop, whatever or laptop chip. Okay. Um, they even they they showed the the, the little uh, image of of the thumb pad, designed for extended play uh, sessions. So um, that'll be interesting. I like how it looks. The thumb pad. Um, there's going to be an official dock. 
um, that'll be connected for, connected for external displays, wire networking, USB peripherals, and, and power. Um, you can also use a powered USB-C hub if you've got one laying around. That's going to be sold separately. We don't have a price on that uh, yet. So um, this should cost uh, more money. This should absolutely cost more money. I don't know much about PC prices, but I know that it's expensive. It's especially expensive now. Um, the fact that this is coming out in a time with a parts and uh, supplies shortage is uh, fairly incredible. Um when someone, it was like a year ago, I think, uh, we talked about someone who basically had mocked up, mocked this up. They had done something like this. They had made a portable uh, switch style PC that had controllers that came off the sides. And I think it was figured at the time that it would have been like 800 to 1000 to produce it. Something like that. So that was so, kind of cutting edge. And so even if this was to be, um, you know, mass produced, obviously you'd see prices come down. Sure. Uh, and they went for something middle of the road. Like I said, I would not have expected the entry point for this to have been any lower than 600. And I think even that would have impressed me. My first look at when I first looked at this, I said, oh, that's cool. It's going to be way too expensive for me to consider. I'm fine with my laptop. And then they were like, hey, it's 400. And... Um, I said, well, uh, I happen to have about $400 lying around that I had bookmarked for Nintendo to release a Switch Pro, mm -hmm. and they didn't. So um, Steam's getting my money on it. So this is uh, the power behind this. Or Valve. The Steam Deck can output up to 8K at 60 uh, hertz or 4K at 120 via the USB-C. So that's power. Yeah. I mean, that's like, obviously for the handheld, you don't need that. You don't. Because uh, the, the display on it is a 1280 times 800 resolution. So that's like slightly above 720p, but it's 800p uh, right there. 1610 uh, aspect ratio, which means it'll be slightly wider than, you know, than your 169, but no, slightly fatter. Yeah, I'm trying to my head do that. But yeah, it, it's about slightly, a 169 though. Slightly fatter. So it's a 169, you know. Display. 720p display. Similar to like the Switch, uh, but obviously a lot more powerful. Uh, here, so um, it's really interesting. That obviously, they partnered with uh, AMD to come up with this. So, the fact that it says virtually any triple A game in the Steam library, when you hear that, you're like, "Wow, okay." Then this is basically a portable, you know, PC. Like that's that's it. Yep. And uh, they're not saying like caveats. Well, you can't play this game. No, virtually any game. So they're they're hopefully future proofing this. Obviously, they would have to. I think they're only going to be able to future proof it so much in terms of well, a lot. I think a lot of games even that come out say next year are probably not going to be able to be played on maximum settings, of course. But you're going to be able to run everything as well as you need to. Yeah, in a handheld though, you won't need yeah. maximum no, settings, you don't. especially when you're looking. But at if you're telling me with the use of this dock, it's the same like with the Switch dock. It pumps up, you know, the power going to there that you can do 8K at 60 frames. Yeah, that's future proofed. Because like 8K, 8K? Are you kidding me? How many people have 8K uh, TVs? You know? Yeah. So this is interesting to me for... Uh, it's interesting to look at... Um, hmm. You forgot to mention the most important thing about this. What? A real D-pad! I said I had a real D-pad on the side. With no circle bullshit! I, I mean, I said that. Okay, sorry. It's I okay. read it that. Sorry, sorry, I wasn't listening. Ian. I was trying right. to find the text specs. I, I apologize, Ian. It's fine. It's okay. What are we saying? It's all right. It's okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, <laughs> woo! Um, what was I saying? So this has kind of changed how I, I'm looking at this entire generation, at least uh, personally. Uh, one of the big things they announced is that this is not a walled garden uh, system. You will be able to do basically whatever you you want to do with this. It you, has a sandbox mode. You will like be able VCS. to. You will be able. They're to, still from the VCS. You'll be able to treat it like a a, a normal computer. Um, it's been said that if you want to put uh, Windows on it, you'd be able to put Windows on it. Um, they've already said that you know that you won't be stopped from putting um, other game store services on it. So uh, good old games, Epic Game Store, Game Pass. This is where I'm going, Pat. Uh, this is where I'm going. We're in sync today. 
uh, Game Pass is the so all of this opens up the top possibility uh, for Game Pass on this. And this is huge to me because when I look at modern consoles, when I look at the new generation of consoles and I'm looking at PlayStation 5s and Xbox Series, PlayStation is probably going to have some some at some point Japanese exclusives that I'm going to want. Uh, probably a fighting game or something. Microsoft, however, has looked fairly appealing to me um, because Game Pass is becoming more appealing. When it comes to AAA games, I don't play a lot of them. Or when I do, I buy them, I mess around with them for 10, 15 minutes, I have my good time, and I'm done. I don't feel bad about that necessarily, but it has stopped me from buying a lot of modern AAA games because I just don't feel like buying, paying the $60 price tag to essentially check it out. And there's not a whole mm -hmm. lot of rental and stuff going on right now. So being able to get all of these, this rotating library of current games, you know, a lot of big games are released day and date on um, Game Pass. Like MLB The Show 21 was released uh, on, on launch day on Game Pass. Uh, Streets of Rage 4, when it first came out, was originally released like right away on Game Pass. So Game Pass has been very appealing. If I can get Game Pass on a capable handheld system to go, I no longer need to think about the Xbox at all. Yeah, it, and there's it nothing. sort of shuts them out. Uh, Halo the Infinite, you know, uh, if I if uh, my current attempt at going through the Halo games isn't going swimmingly. Um, but if, I mean, say I wanted Halo Infinite, you know, arguably one of the biggest exclusives that's going to be on the Xbox series. Uh, I can now play that via PC on the Steam Deck. Mm -hmm. I it, it has it has come and I like a lot of like. I like I like the Game Pass idea, but unfortunately for Microsoft, this release has completely 100 percent just I, the Xbox may as well not exist to me. But you still be playing Microsoft games and that's all they care. Yes, about. Yes, and that's all they care about. So they're still winning. Like I said, I'm so not, this I'm, not is, I'm not trying to necessarily this go after this isn't Microsoft an Xbox here, killer but or it, Microsoft killer. Well, it's an Xbox killer. It's not necessarily well, a Microsoft killer. I want it, to it, it's a Microsoft killer to me. Well, Xbox no, killer I me. mean, you still have people that are in the, the Xbox ecosystem that won't get this and transfer. Sure, over. this is for people like me or you that be like, well, I'm not exactly. I'm not. I don't. I don't Xbox. need to dip my toes remember, back into. Remember it. how I saw about? Okay, I can see getting a Series yeah. S. I'll buy this before a Series S. Sure, this makes more sense. The the portable probably more powerful too, but I, I I can't say that for sure. We don't know. Um, obviously, you, uh, well, I'm looking at it right now. So first of all, the first batch is already gone, but this is like this is the new model where it's like, well, order it now, and we'll give you an estimate of when it's going to ship in the future. So now the earliest you can get it is quarter two, 2022. It says that's if I pre-order it right now, quarter two. You, you're probably in for quarter one. I'm guessing. I two. got, I got, yeah, I did pre-order one. I got in for quarter one. So you're going to get it first three months, uh, and I'm going to get it if I order it. But I'm, I'm. I'm debating whether or not to go for the middle one for 529 because it's like, well, you get the solid state drive, and yes, probably you'd be able to put in your own solid state drive, but for 129 bucks more, that solid state drive only costs like I think I think it's like 40 or 50 bucks. So obviously that's how they get you. You're basically paying 70 bucks more for the for the, for just the benefit of having it pre-installed that that drive. So I'm thinking about that. The, I think the um, middle. I think the middle one does make sense. I think the solid state drive will be nice for a lot of people. I think it's going to be nice for anyone who but, plays these games, who plays modern games on on a PC, or is buying this to play modern games. The majority of what I play is not going to require that, a lot of space, and that will boot faster than everything on the card. Yes. So that's the, the benefit. I'm not sure how how quick it's going to boot on the card versus the solid state. Solid state's super freaking fast. And obviously, for all three of these models, you can have external memory cards to for whatever. Right. Add your terabyte card because obviously people are saying 64 gigs is nothing. That's one AAA game is 64 gigs nowadays. But yes, you can. It's one AAA game or yeah. all of the old fucking uh, every indie game that ever games yeah. I, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I've been playing. <laughs> every good old games and yeah. you know game from the 80s that ever existed, um, and then some. So if I if I just for the hell of it, five hundred twelve gigabyte SD card, I want to see what they cost nowadays. They're so cheap. An SD card or a solid state drive? A, a, just an SD card, like they're like uh, ten bucks for wow. like a Sandisk. I mean, they're not that much money for that's okay. Extreme Pro, that's probably gonna need the fast one. Uh, Extreme uh, Pro five hundred uh, Ultra, we'll just say. Oh, I'm sorry, they're more money than I thought. Yeah, okay, they, for, they for the still Ultra. Are. Okay, that's eighty bucks. They're that much for that for yeah. the ultra. I was gonna say I I look at I the thought they're like fifteen twenty bucks for the switch. No, they're not. 
Okay, what's a what's a terabyte? I don't know they had terabytes. Okay, those are more money than I thought. Okay, when I look at that, it makes more a lot more sense than to go for the unless you have one laying around already. I have some from like, uh, you know, for like video uh, stuff. So that's probably they haven't released. I think yet the the what the minimum requirement though is for the carts. Maybe you don't need the high 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 end one. Yeah, you hope. I don't know because usually the high end ones are for video capture on the fly. You know, yeah, for the transfer speeds. So maybe maybe you can get away with the middle ground one, and there'll, there'll be like fifteen bucks, twenty bucks. Because like, what's the switch? The switch one doesn't cost a two, huge amount of money for the switch one. They're they're right. They're they're the same types of memory cards as these. They do cost quite. They, they, really? They're, they're not super cheap. I thought I paid, paid, crazy I thought I paid twenty twenty five for mine. Was it maybe it was on what sale? What size? Two fifty six maybe. Probably on sale. Okay. That's probably closer to like a fifty dollar memory card. So when you go when you go that route, then yeah, it makes sense for me to go for the middle one with the solid state built. I think it does for a lot of people. This um, is, this one I get at though. I, I couldn't uh, justify it at this the time. Is, this appeals to me though more as also the P, the PC side. The fact that you tell me this is a PC and likely Valve is selling it at a at a significant loss, and we'll get into why they're doing that um, in, in a bit. Now I'm like, okay, I can bring a laptop out with me somewhere to a convention. This is going to be more powerful than probably the current laptop we are using. Mm-hmm. This is a five-year-old laptop that's still... We can run stuff on this. We can run AAA games on this. Yeah. Not high. And so I'm bringing something that's small form. Already is a built-in game device. This is not. I could buy this, uh, whatever the adapter, the small little adapter is to hook up to a TV or whatever, or a monitor. Um, who knows what that's going to cost, but I can't picture that's costing more than 100 bucks. hopefully, you know. This is a new PC on top of a game device. And that means that if yep. I'm out somewhere, hell, I could fucking do video editing on this. I could render out videos. That This thing probably renders out video just as fast as my desktop or in the neighborhood, we'll just say, sure. with a dedicated regular. So when you, I hear all that, I'm like, this could be intriguing to a lot of people that probably don't even game or game only a little bit and just do the PC stuff. Sure. Potentially. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a new form factor. And I, I mean, going forward... I mean, uh, we, we, Alienware was still announcing theirs. They're behind now with the UFO. They announced yeah. that like a year ago. Uh, so we'll see what they come out with. But I can't picture Alienware taking a, a loss on a product because they don't have the software sales to back it up, which will get, you know. So a couple of things I do want to uh, touch on here. Um, one, um, it's not like I, I, I don't, I don't want to phrase this poorly. Uh, Nintendo's not in danger. Nintendo's not going anywhere. Nintendo's not going out of business. But Nintendo is losing sales to this. I, I, I can I, I can almost guarantee you that I am not the only person who was setting aside money for a Switch Pro, was not super thrilled with the OLED model. Literally, this comes out the this is announced the same day pre-orders for the OLED model go up for sale. I think a lot of people looked and might have been like, "Well, if I already have a Switch, well, I don't need the upgrade. I'll, I don't need to upgrade. I'll, there's there's, there's no upgrade. More. Yeah, I'm and getting oh, a I'm getting a fucking PC, a portable PC, right. handheld um, PC." So, yeah, I mean, bad, bad, bad move all around on Nintendo's part. Um, I, well, I, I don't know if they knew this was coming, but obviously it's, well, that no, was Well, no, but it's still idiotic of them to not do a performance upgrade. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's dumb. Besides it, the it, battery, it, did, yeah. it didn't need to be a... It didn't need to be a base splitting move. It could have just helped some of the games that stutter like fucking crazy on the thing run smoothly. Um, so Nintendo decided they didn't want to, and now... Valve is gonna get some of that lunch. Um, yeah, but in terms of because someone asked us, I'll, we'll get into the, the you know some, the Twitter things. But see, we're like, oh, is this a, a Switch killer? No, it's not a Switch killer because Nintendo still has the software. No, it's absolutely not a Switch killer, but it's definitely going to take a bit. It's definitely going to take any it, wind out of the sails of the OLED. It, yes, no one is. There, it, when when, when these two things are released for the same price at the same time, smart consumers who have a working Switch are going yes. to look at the. If they've already got the money set aside, they're going to look at the Steam Deck and go, "This is way cooler." Mm-hmm. If Nintendo had released a Switch Pro, I would have bought the Switch Pro over this. Yes. I would have taken the performance upgrade. They did it, and it. It's literally a, I could have been convinced to get an OLED if this hadn't come out. I might have for somewhere down the line done it, but there's no reason now. So there's definitely uh, money that Nintendo is losing from that decision. We forgot to say that the other cool thing is that um, for the pre-order, you only wait, you put five bucks down it, and then I guess when it's ready to ship, then you pay the rest. Yeah. So that's really cool. Yeah. So if I, yeah, I, I should put it on the five bucks. I don't know why I didn't do it right away, you know, especially if it's refundable, I'm guessing. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna get one. I'm just gonna decide what model. I think I'm in. I think I'm in. The other thing I want to touch on that a lot of people have brought up, rightfully so, 
um, is that Valve does not have the greatest history of um, supporting stuff. But when you look, and, and that's very true. However, when you look at some of the stuff Valve has put out in the past, and I think the two things that people point to the most are the Steam Box and the Steam Controller. If there was no excitement there, I, I thought both of those were kind of silly ideas to begin with. I forget what the Steam Box even was. The Steam Box was a series uh, of boxes. It was essentially a console PC. But, okay, it was, that's, that's right. but it was that's after right. every fucking laptop had it was it was after every laptop had an HDMI port. It was after Steam did uh, big screen mode, which essentially, you know, changes the UI to look like a console interface okay. on your TV. So it's very easy to use. It was hard. It was it was hard to see what the fuck the real purpose of a Steam box was. Sure. And the Steam controller. I, I don't I don't I, I didn't hear a positive thing about the Steam controller from the moment those pictures were released. It's a weird looking controller. Sure. Um, some people liked it, but a lot of people looked at it and said, what what is this for? Um, Steam is, or Valve is not going to put a lot of money behind stuff that does not have enthusiasm or interest in it. It was idiotic of them, I think, to maybe make those moves in the first place. Um, but I, I them not supporting it. I don't think is necessarily like Google where Google just Google just comes up with shit and gets rid of it for no reason, even if people are using it. Sure. Um, this has excitement behind it. This is something that I think is actually going to have an install base. Uh, if the pre-orders are anything to show, I don't think valve is magically going to just stop supporting this when it's got people behind it. The steam deck or the steam box and the steam controller didn't exactly have a groundswell of support. Sure. So they are banking, obviously. They say, well, Pat, why are they taking a loss on this? Well, they're banking on the Steam ecosystem because yep. they make 30% on every dollar. They make 30 cents on every dollar that you spend on Steam. 30 cents. They sell these at a loss, and they're going to reap benefits. Just the first week of people having this lying and bed, buying every yeah. 2 or $3 yeah, weird oh. fucking game that they want to yeah. try out on this thing. It doesn't matter that everyone's got a backlog of 400 fucking Steam games. Everyone's going to buy another and, 15 when they get this. And I'm sure thing. there'll be tons of, when this first hits people, there are going to be tons of sales. And they'll yes. be like, you're going to boot oh, it up. The way, it, you're going to boot up and be like, oh, that game you wanted for 10 bucks, it's now $4 this week. You the, know, The people who get this like the week before the winter sale goes live are going to lose a lot of <laughs> yeah. money. That's that's the gambit. And that, 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 that's they're going to they're gonna make up the money the same way that um, Sony and Microsoft uh, usually lose money on their consoles as they make them back in software and accessories. And, and you say, you know, you might say, well, they can use other programs. They can install GOG and stuff. Yes, but I, I think the people who like to tinker with things th tend to think that or, or, or do these extra steps, um, which I'm all for. They tend to think they're the majority of users. They're not. They're, not. they're, they're like 20 percent, maybe 20 percent. 15. Most people uh, who buy, I think a lot. I don't want to say most, but I do think many over 50% of the people who buy this are never going to do anything with it other than how it comes out of the box. Convenience is a huge thing yes. for people. Power it up. You see your Steam uh, log in there. Play, click your game you're in. Not like booting into Windows or having to, first of all, wiping it, then installing Windows, and then installing your software. Not that it takes a huge amount of time. You're talking about a couple hours of your day you know, to, to get up and running. But there's some people who don't want to deal with that. I don't want right. to deal with it. I want my ecosystem. I love Steam. Remember how people piss away about Epic Games was trying to challenge you? There are people that are Steam fanboys. I don't get it. It's a marketplace that charges uh, too much you know, for their cut. I don't get it, but there are people that are Steam fanboys that are into it. I, I, so. it, it it's just one of those things where people get real picky about having to put something else on their computer because it, I don't know. It so if, so this this handheld PC, whatever you call it, it protects them from people jumping ship potentially to go to Epic because the people will still go on Epic, but it keeps their fan base insulated. It gives it a shot in the arm. It gets people like me that want to buy it. And even though I don't buy a lot of stuff on Steam, I, I am now at least closer to buying something on Steam having this handheld, you know, if I'm not a big shopper before. And, and I have been play, playing and buying a lot of stuff on Steam. And every and night that I'm sitting in front of my laptop doing that, I go, this would be so much better on the couch. As Battle Cat on Twitter tweeted, at Jedi, Jedi YTE said, uh, potentially from his friends, discussing with, with their friends, Valve views Microsoft as an existential threat due to requiring Steam to be an app in the Windows Store and making Valve pay for it. See, I didn't know that. Yeah. And is desperate to get an alt alternate OS in the hands of users. 
that that could be something as well. I think that they, is a, they I keep, think there's something to be said there. They can keep even more of their money potentially. I didn't know it was an app. I thought when I da- I thought I just I downloaded it separately when I first got Steam. I, d- I did not know that it's a it's it's a different requirement or maybe it's I don't know. Or maybe they're looking at like like if if you have like an Xbox, can you get Steam on an Xbox console? Is that I allowed? I don't think so. Okay. I can't imagine why you would be able to. I mean, an Xbox lock that is out? not a computer. Yeah, that doesn't seem like something that would be on there. Huh, I did I did not know that. I I to look into that. Valve uh Windows app. Windows app. So yeah. So yeah, I, I think I'm I think I'm in for one. When because when you tell me, especially if, we, if obviously they didn't say, hey everyone, we're 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 uh we're taking a loss in this, but when it comes out, hey, they're taking a loss in it, then it's to me it's like, oh, this is a good deal. I can't replicate this outside of them taking a you know what I mean? Yeah. It gets your juices flowing. You know, the same way, you know, the PS, you know, the PS3 was like they, they lost like a couple hundred dollars on it or whatever when it first came out. No, this, this is very much a thing where the first to market is going to have a significant benefit, I think. Yeah. So that whenever the alienware, whenever the, their version of this comes out, you know, they're they're obviously I can't picture them taking a loss because they don't have the software sales to back it up. Right, they they can't. They can't. They can't take a loss. There might be a, like eight hundred dollars or nine hundred dollars. You know, like they can't. Steam could do this. Epic could do this. Microsoft could do this. But I don't think anyone currently has the library breadth of Steam to make it uh, successful. Do you think you'll see an Epic one? They have the money. Obviously, they could do it. Obviously, they do. I think that's that remains to be seen. It's will, possible. Will we see? Will we see competitive handheld PCs? I, I, well, that's what I'm, I think. If the, if this takes off, and I think all indications are that it will, I think we are going to start. I mean, it's the first person to make a laptop wasn't the only person to ever make a laptop. I do think we will start to see more handheld PCs. I don't know how quick it better happen. slash gaming devices like yeah. this that are straight up because because you know, obviously like Nvidia Shield is a little bit weaker. It doesn't count. Um, but, uh, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm in Ian. I, I, I'll put in my, I'll put down my five bucks. Do it. We can, we can, pro- we can finally play the Friday 13th game. Here. I think the support for that is going down. Oh, really? Yeah. See, this is something that I am very excited about though. I will finally have a handheld with access to the steam on that with it. Not Steam, a PC online ecosystem. I will finally be able to access and play games on like you're sitting on the couch or in a hotel room and you're just like the biggest yeah the biggest user base and you can play it yeah be in a, be in a hotel play, on wi-fi playing multiplayer games we can play some civ 2 net on there ian 